All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday, June 2nd. We got a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'll give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, all of my final plays, so what I'm rolling with myself, if you do want to fade me, all of my final plays are going to be in the pinned comment. You can fade me if you want. All those plays will be in the pinned comment. Guys, last night, uh, we do actually have a profitable night. It's not going to look like it from a, you know, a checks and X's perspective because it looks like three and three, but two of the losses were half unit losses. Um, so pretty much a three and two night when you boggle it down to the monies. Um, but nonetheless, uh, kind of weird. We hit all three player props we had and lost all three game side picks. So a little interesting there, but I'll take the slight, slight, slight profit over slight loss, right? So a three and three from a win-loss perspective, but again, two of those losses uh, amount to one technically because that Royals first five and the Royals plus one and a half um, were each a half unit play. So um, kind of some to one loss there, but not the best night. Still weird. Like the player props, it's it, it just weird to see that three player props catch and then the three side plays do not. Um, we don't have a ride of the day. I slacked yesterday. The day kind of got away from us. So use hashtag ride of the day in the comments, guys, and I'll be jumping aboard with one person's pick, giving you a shout out in the next video win or loss but let's talk some ball here um, we're starting off with Houston taking on Minnesota this series has been split so far game number one Minnesota kind of dominates 6-1 win right they get to Blanco game number two Valdez goes seven innings and um, Houston bounces back and wins five to two on the mound today we have Hunter Brown who um, might as well call him Hunter Womp Womp he has had two good starts in a row but I cannot trust this guy as far as I could throw him going up against Simeon Woods Richardson who you know has been pretty good this season. Um, had one bad start recently. I want to say it was like three or four starts ago, but overall he's been fairly consistent. He's not going deep into games, which worries me a little bit about having to go through uh, this really good Houston offense, obviously. But I do still think, you know, when we boggle it down to the pitchers, um, I just can't really trust Hunter Brown. So I'm going to lean towards Minnesota here uh, in this spot. I like that they're plus 122. I think there's a little bit of value there. Um, but overall, like I could see an argument being made for Houston. Like they kind of did what they're supposed supposed to do yesterday right if they're going to give you kind of a minimum of five runs then yeah I mean that's their their offense could win in this game even if Hunter Brown kind of has a slip up and Hunter Brown's had a couple starts in a row that were pretty damn good so I can see a lane to Houston but for the money and the plus 120 odds there I think that this is a potential spot to back the better who I believe is the better pitcher and the better bullpen um, overall as well so give me Houston uh, excuse me give me give me Minnesota um, better starter rested bullpen and hopefully Hunter Brown doesn't go out there um, and continue doing what he's been doing in terms of the total in this one I don't have the strongest opinion here um, I'm going to lean towards the under because I do think that if this game starts to become a shootout or a high scoring uh, affair here this is probably uh, a game that you know ends up leaning towards Houston so I'm gonna hope that this one's like a you know a, a five to two or a, a three to two type of a game something below the number because I think that that's gonna aid towards Minnesota's chances a little bit better and I forgot to mention, guys, added plays will also be in the pinned comment. Obviously, we have, you know, the, the X amount of time video and the research that we do during the video and before the video. But I'm constantly looking at plays and things that I have, uh, find value in throughout the day. So sometimes you'll see added plays. Like, I believe um, Gonzalez yesterday was an added play we didn't talk about in the video and ended up cashing, right? So keep an eye on the pinned comment. Everything we talk about I like and I'm leaning towards. But all my final plays, again, if you do want to fade me, all those plays are going to be in the pinned comment. Or if you want to ride with me, those plays will be in the pinned comment just the same. All right, Baltimore taking on Tampa Bay. Baltimore cruising in this series so far, at least from a final score perspective. Three to one and then nine to five. Um, Bradish and Bradley, both not necessarily the best starts uh, for them yesterday. Um, but overall, we have Cole Irvin on the mound going up against Zach Lytell today. Lytell's been good, um, but so has Cole Irvin. The thing is, if we go to the dashboard here, um, if you guys want access to this, become a channel member, $2.99 a month. There should be a join button near the subscribe button. We get this each and every day. Look at this. Not many um, left-handed hits in this Tampa Bay lineup and that's kind of where Cole Orvin thrives so I will say that that should be a a good look for Tampa Bay but then all, in the same breath it's like well look at Tampa Bay last 30 days on the road against the lefty you know what I mean it's like okay like we can't we can't start hyping up this offense too too much or too quickly you know so I am going to lean towards Baltimore I think you have a pitcher that is pitching his ass off um, only two earned runs in his last five starts and they came in the same game against Arizona um, and it was off of a home run so it's like this dude is he's averaging 14 pitches per inning um, pitching over set six innings in his last five starts with a .4 ERA so Cole Irvin's definitely 
definitely got the hot hand. This shouldn't be a Tampa Bay lineup that we're all that afraid of. The only thing that I mentioned there is that he's really good against left-handed hitters. This is not a lefty stacked Tampa Bay lineup, but I feel like that's like such a little con compared to the, you're getting the better pitcher. You're getting what probably is the better offense in the better team, uh, better bullpen as well. You know what I mean? So I'm going to lean towards, I'm going to lean towards uh, Baltimore in this one. I think you're getting them at a good price. Their bullpen is definitely super taxed, um, but it's not like I sit there and, and get a little worried about that. Like Tampa Bay's bullpen, even if they're not taxed or rested, not the best bullpen in the world. So give me Baltimore on the money line. Uh, total, we're looking at eight and a half as well in this one. I don't mind. I don't mind someone liking the over in this spot, but I do think that Irvin's going to deal. So I might think about like a Rays team total under um, compared to a full game under because I do think that uh, the Orioles are going to need to put up runs um, against Lytel or obviously to win right um, so I'm going to lean towards team total under for the Rays I'm backing Irvin and almost telling myself that we're going to ignore the fact that he's a little bit worse against righties which is the majority if not all of their lineup than lefties you know what I mean so yeah give me give me the uh, team total for the under on the Rays here um, they scored what was it uh, five runs yesterday uh, but what the last few games, one, one, one run, three runs, like I, I get it. They're obviously a, a decent, a decent offense, but just have not been consistent. So Her Irvin should be able to get, get him here. A player prop that I really don't mind in this spot is going to be Randy Arozarena under one and a half total bases. You can get that for minus 145 over on DK right now. So it's a little bit juiced, um, but he's hit the under here in 74% of his games. Um, when on the road against a lefty, he's hit the under in 75% of games this season. And he's batting just 133 against left-handed pitchers this season. So I do think that that could be a good spot. And we know Irvin's going to throw a lot of curveballs, right? Um well, just so happens that this is a spot in which Randy Arzarena does not hit very well against curveballs. 33% K rate, 238 Woba, um, which is weighted on base average. So, yeah, I do think that could be a good spot for his under today as well. Next up, we have Boston taking on Detroit here. Uh, Brian Bayo on the mound for Boston, going up against Casey Mize. Uh, this would be a spot where I would, I would immediately say, oh, I like the Red Sox. They've won two straight here um, after losing 5 nothing in the series. But that price is a little you know, eyebrow raising, right? Um, now it has come down. It's at minus 138, which makes a little bit more sense. Um, but are the Red Sox that much better than this, this Detroit team? I mean, they're showing it in the last two games. I think I'm still going to lean Red Sox, but that price kind of almost puts it out of reach to me. Like you're getting the better starter and the better bullpen, but for all intents and purposes, other than the last two games of the series, Detroit has a better or has been a more consistent offense over the last month or so. So um, definitely something to, to monitor. Maybe if that price gets into somehow, like the minus 120s, we could pull the trigger. But I like the Red Sox, just not for the price they're at today. I don't think I can make an easy lane to get to Detroit, in all honesty. Um, but that's just kind of where my, my head's at, at right now, I guess. Red Sox or maybe a, a pass on this one overall. Um, but in terms of the total, we're looking at nine. Um, I could see this one ending right around five to four. So um, I'll, I'll slightly lean towards the over, just given the fact that if I think it's like a five, four finish, one run comes from something, right? Pass, ball, error, unexpected stolen base, uh, gets a guy in scoring position, that type of thing. So I'll lean over, but I doubt that makes its way anywhere near um, the final plays, all, in all honesty. I also don't mind a play we rolled with yesterday and might think about pulling the trigger again. Spencer Torkelson under one and a half bases. I also don't mind for plus money is under one and a half hits run in RBIs. This is a guy that has seven bases in his last 10 games. That sounds pretty cool, right? They all came on the same day, um, you know, a little over a week ago. So he's hit the under in nine of his last 10 games. But it just so happens he had, obviously, um, I think it was one home run and then a, a couple different hits, um, two other hits or something on that day. Um, and he's going up against Brian Bayo, which he's a right-handed pitcher. Torkelson batting 195 against righties this season. Uh, so I do think that this could be a decent spot. The one concern is Brian Bayo is going to throw a lot of sinkers, a lot of change-ups, and a lot of sliders. Two of those three, sinker and slider, Torkelson actually hits fairly well. But I still think that this is a play that's absolutely on trend. Um, he's hit the under in 65% of games this year. And against right-handed pitchers, it's 73. And against right-handed pitchers on the road, 80%. So this could be a decent spot for us to roll with again. And again, his hits, runs, and RBIs for plus money taking the under could be something that we consider as well. Real quick, guys, before we do get to the rest of the games, I wanted to talk to you about Sleeper. If you are not on the Sleeper yet, uh, app yet, you need to wake up. You need to stop sleeping. 
See what I did there? This is my favorite DFS player prop app out there, and they have two discounted squares for Sunday. A hockey one, I know this is a baseball video, a hockey one, and a WNBA Caitlin Clark one there. They've knocked um, Bettinger's saves line down to 20 and a half, and Caitlin Clark's points line down to 13 and a half. Guys, go check it out. They'll match your first deposit 100%. If you're following me on Instagram, at EvPicks, by the way, it'll be rotating through here right around this area throughout the show. I'm posting sleeper picks all the time and parlays and whatnot. I truly do stand by this app. If you try it out, I think you'll like it. Um, if you like player props, you'll love it. If it's available in your state, wake up. Go download the Sleeper app. Use the link in the pinned comment. First deposit matched, you get these squares, and I bet you'll get a uh, free square as well. They do that pretty much for every single day that a new uh, user signs up. So they're awesome over there, guys. Go check it out. I've used this app for plenty now, like, what, a year and a half maybe? And I love it. Maybe two years. Uh, it's my favorite DFS app out there. So go ahead and check out Sleeper. Link in the pinned comment. It'll automatically apply all the discounts and get you all the goodies, all right? Link in the pinned comment. Go check out Sleeper. Let's jump back into the rest of these games today. All right, Atlanta taking on Oakland. Uh, much like yesterday, this is one that truly does not interest me all that much. You do have minus 245 favorites for Atlanta. Charlie Morton's on the mound. Going up against Lewis Medina, who uh, is making his season debut here. I believe he hurt his knee and is coming back today. So overall, this is probably not a spot that we dig too deep into. Maybe the, the Braves in some sort of a parlay here. I think they're the better team. And we, we honestly don't know what we're going to get out of uh, Medina, right? So... Yeah, Braves in some sort of parlay. Um, yesterday they lost, right? Was it 11 to something, right? So it's like p perfect bounce back spot for them as well. But for minus 245, that's not a singles play. Probably some sort of parlay throw in. Um, in terms of, I, I love the, I, I mean, I don't love it, but I love the the comedy of when I say that, right? I'm already saying it's not my favorite spot. And I go, probably some sort of a parlay throw in. Sure enough, every single day we get these comments. It, yeah, well, I threw that in my parlay and it lost. It's like, well, I clearly was not saying that I was the most confident person in the world giving you that. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, you guys interpret everything I say how you want to. It's a free country, right? Um, in terms of a total, you're probably looking at an under. A lot of runs exhausted yesterday. I could see the Braves putting up like five, but the A's probably get to like three or four today, so uh, maximum. So I'm going to lean towards the under uh, ever so slightly as well. All right, Toronto taking on Pittsburgh. Um, one of the games that crushed us yesterday. I really liked Kikichi versus Keller in that first five. That's why we rolled with it. And Toronto let us down there. So uh, unfortunate there. But nonetheless, um, we're looking at a new game today, right? And we have Bassett on the mound for Toronto, who I definitely don't love, okay? But Quinn Priester's coming back after being out in the AAA. He got sent down for being bad um, essentially and now he's coming back up and I don't think this is a great offense like you have a you have a built up like tension uh, frustrated offense after one run yesterday right like I do think that this is going to be a bad spot for him so I like Toronto and then I also like um, potentially looking at their team total over I don't really think that Quinn Priester is going to come out here and deal today. Uh, this is a Toronto offense. If we look at the dashboard here, uh, you can see uh, top 10 in almost all of these offensive categories. And if not top 10, just outside 12th, 12th, and 11th in average ISO and slugging. Compared to this offense, like, yeah, a little bit more red there, right? Which, again, Bassett isn't looking all that great. But somehow, some way, he looks a little bit better than Quinn Priester had looked. Um, but again, uh, I think this is just a spot where Toronto could score some runs. I'm probably more likely to look at their team total over. Maybe in the first five, I'd also like to target the bullpen. So full game first, uh, full game team total, I don't mind either. But I think that's the way that we play it. I just hope we don't get a dud of an offensive uh, outing from them again. Like eight runs throughout the entire game. Uh, excuse me, one run to the, compared to the Pirates, eight runs. I could have made the same offensive argument yesterday, and I did. And we bet it, and it didn't come through, right? So hopefully I'm not spinning myself in circles here. But give me Toronto as well as the team total over. Over. Um, I guess that means for a, a full game over. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I really don't like that. I don't expect Pittsburgh to score a bunch of runs, so I am going to leave my total lean at the Toronto team total over um, just for the sake of what I actually might roll with myself. And one player prop real quick before we move on that I do like here is going to be Cabrian Hayes under one and a half bases. I think, and I'm probably jinxing it, knock on wood, right? I think I'm starting to find a nice little groove in these under one and a half bases. We've been cashing them plenty yesterday, cashed a few yesterday, um, and, and cashing them plenty as of late. Uh, so I think this could be a good look. Now, he um, hit a home run yesterday, but he only has a couple home runs on the entire season. So I feel like he hits a home run. He's got to come back down to earth, right? Like, this isn't a guy that's going to stay absolutely hot. So uh, Cabrian Hayes under one and a half bases. Uh, he's batting 216 compared to 245 on the year versus right-handed pitchers. Um, and Chris Bassett, surprisingly enough, 
pitching well against righties. Um, and there is a decent amount of righties in this Pittsburgh lineup. So back to the Toronto lean, like maybe that's even a decent spot to take a peek at too as well. But nonetheless, guys, uh, that Brian Hayes under one and a half base, a slight player prop lean. All right, next up, we have Cleveland taking on Washington. Um, I do think a lot of people are going to think that they're kind of being slick pulling the trigger on Washington today because Jake Irvin's on the mound, who the dude's been pitching really well and really well on the road, going up against Carlos Carrasco, who has has not, uh, to say the least. Um, But I still... Like, I think a lot of people, again, just kind of reiterate, I think a lot of people are going to think, ooh, Jake Irvin against Carrasco, um, this could be a spot to take a flyer on Washington. I'm still going to leave Cleveland, but I understand the, the the reasoning and rationale behind wanting to back this pitcher because it's like, good pitcher. Cleveland's offense is not, like, tremendous. In this series, they haven't been uh, tremendous. I mean, they scored, what, seven runs in game one, so I guess that's not true. But yesterday's game was a three to three to two game. Overall, Cleveland pulls it out. Um I'm going to lean Cleveland. It kind of pains me to do so because I see that path backing the pitcher to get to Washington. But uh, overall, you have still the better offense, even though it's not a massive offense, the better bullpen, taxed bullpen. So if you're a Washington fan today, then yes, you know, you can make that argument as well. But to me, it's just like it's it's too it's almost like a square sharp play, if that makes sense. Like, oh, Washington's got the better pitcher and they're plus money underdogs like I see it. I can't pull the trigger on it, unfortunately. I'm going to lean towards Cleveland here in this spot. Um, where I can get behind, I guess, the idea of these uh, of, of Jake Irvin doing his thing and everything like that is a potential look at the under. I could see this being a 4-3 game at most, no matter who's winning it, right? So I'll, I'll probably like the under more than, I guess I would even say the total anyways, to be completely honest. Um, but... Again, this is not to talk you off of it if you are falling into that category of, I see the Washington lane today. I just think a lot of people are going to think they're really smart today with that Washington one, um, and the book's still coming really strong with that number to, next to Cleveland's name, you know? Um, but, hey, can always fade me. Um, in terms of player props here in this spot, nothing much that uh, jumps out at me. I kind of want to look at, um, but I feel like I'm starting to just say a bunch of these uh, <laughs> these bases. Will Brennan under one and a half bases? Uh, he's done that in five straight games, nine of his last 10, and 85% of his last 20. Could see that being a spot as well. But again, I can't just start getting like, I think I'm, I'm Superman with these under one and a half bases, right? Like at some point, we have to lose. We can't just win them all. So maybe I'm getting a little gun, gun happy over here. In fact, you know what? Let's keep the vibes going. If you guys made it this far into the video, comment bases down below. Um, I know that I might be crazy taking all these under and bases, but you know what? It's been working so far. So comment bases if you made it this far into the video. And let me know what your favorite player prop category is to bet. Is it home runs, taking the flyer, pitcher, strikeouts, bases, hits, that type of thing? Let me know. I know one of mine is definitely um, under in strikeouts, under .5 strikeouts, just rooting for the guy not to strike out all game. We've talked about that here in the channel before, how electric that is. Um, But hits, runs, and RBIs is kind of like the points, rebounds, and assists, in my opinion, in basketball. So that's definitely up there as well. All right, Mets taking on Arizona. We got Brandon Fdat on the mound for Arizona, going up against Jose Quintana for the Mets. Um, luckily for Brandon Fat, if we look at the dashboard here, um, he isn't that great against lefties, right? But there isn't many lefties in this Mets lineup, so really good news for him because every other part of his game right now is looking pretty damn good. Over his last five starts here, he's got a 2.6 ERA. Um, Striking out uh, just about five batters per outing as well. I like this spot for him. I don't think this Mets offense is all that great, even though they've now had two barn burning games, ten to nine, and then ten to five. Um, obviously, high scoring games there. But to, for, for for the sake of this this play, I think that Fat's going to go out there and actually pitch very well. So I'm going to lean towards Arizona here on the money line, as well as taking a peek at them, um, taking a peek at the under and potentially a a team total under for uh, the Mets here in the first five. I think that they score one to two runs in the first five and I'm kind of putting obviously a decent amount of eggs here in um, Fats basket which sounds weird to say out loud but yeah give me the under the first five team total under for the Mets as well as Arizona on the money line banking on Brandon Fat today all right Miami taking on Texas I was so close to throwing Texas money line into the parlay into the plays yesterday um, unfortunately didn't so I can't take credit for it but seven nothing win for them um, we got Trevor Rogers on the mound Trevor stinkers for Miami going up against Andrew Heaney who I also wouldn't really say is all that great but that being said he does pitch to righties better than lefties and there's tons of righties in this Miami lineup. I think there might only be one lefty if I'm not mistaken maybe a switch hitter um, so for what it's worth I do think that he has a little bit of an edge here I'm gonna lean Texas 
in terms of odds you're getting minus 130, similar to what I said um, in game one when they lost. Like, I think that that's just a good price tag to be able to consider Texas uh, with. So um, compared to, you know, I think I'm also a believer in this Texas offense at some point uh, turns it on, which maybe we saw yesterday. I mean, the last few games here, um, other than the two run performance in game one of this series, six, four, six, two, and then seven. I think this Texas lineup starting to heat up a little bit. So uh, give me them on the money line. In terms of the total, uh, we're looking at eight and a half. Um, I could see a, a path to uh, an over here, but for whatever reason, I'm not banking on Miami getting to Heaney or them scoring a lot of runs. So I am going to lean under, but I think the Texas Rangers could put up five today at least. So maybe their team total over could be a decent spot here uh, as well. All right, KC taking on San Diego. They let us down yesterday. Um, I guess you could say it was a hard-fought game. They scored two runs in the first inning, a couple more throughout the game, but ultimately end up losing 7-3. Uh, to three. So when I say a couple more, one more throughout the game. They lost the first five, and we also had them on the run line. Uh, Cole Reagan's on the mound today for them, going up against Michael King. I think a strong pitching advantage here uh, for Kansas City. And just overall, I mean, you look at um, their offenses. Like, their offenses seem to be, in the last 30 days at least, somewhat similar so I think that this could be a good spot for Cole Reagans to go out there and kind of you know mute the, the the Padres offense um and for Kansas City to kind of put up a couple here so I'll take Kansas City but it would probably be a first five money line type play because their bullpen um isn't all that great we have a good San Diego bullpen it's very taxed as um a couple setup guys went yesterday I believe Peralta Estrada and Suarez all went um then uh Morihan, um and I don't know let me see if I can find that really quickly yeah Kansas City's bullpen Kind of tax, but also like their bullpen just isn't good in the first place. Twenty uh, fourth in ERA and then twenty eighth in WHIP. So I think it's a spot for uh, potential lean to the first five here. Uh, anyways, like regardless of the taxing of uh, the Padres bullpen. Um, in terms of what we have from a total perspective, this is probably a five four game or something like that at minimum. So I am going to lean towards the the uh, over as well. All right, another one that's probably like a parlay throw, and we have Milwaukee taking on the White Sox, but it's not just Milwaukee. It's Milwaukee with Freddie Peralta on the mound, um, which is obviously a little bit of a elevation and a bump um, for them. The team is 1-4, uh, and four, though, in his last five starts, so if you're kind of a conspiracy theorist there, maybe there's a, maybe there's a path for you to pull the trigger on a plus 300 uh, underdog in Chicago. I don't think I can get there. Um, Nick Nostrini is on the mound for them. Um, definitely not something that I want to back. So Milwaukee, similar to that Atlanta game, probably some sort of a parlay throw in if you just want a little booster. Um, I also don't mind Milwaukee's team total over. Like that could actually be a play that we could uh, get to. In fact, let me see if I can get the odds for that uh, really quickly. So Milwaukee's runs here. Um, over four and a half, minus one thirty three on Caesars. Not terrible. I was hoping that we'd kind of get a you know a better number, but yeah, that might be a way to bet Milwaukee without having to lay that much juice. But um, I don't mind you know their their team total over and potentially a White Sox. I don't like the full game total because I like Milwaukee score runs and I don't like the White Sox score runs. Right, so I'm gonna lean towards their team total instead of taking that eight. But uh, nonetheless, uh, not the biggest of interest games for me today. All right, got the other Chicago team, the Cubs, taking on Cincinnati here. Cubs get the win yesterday, 7-5. to five. Um, Today, and they lost game number one, so they've split so far. Today, Ben Brown is on the mound for the Cubs, going against Nick Lodolo for Cincinnati. Honestly, these pitchers have been pitching well. Like, nothing bad to say about them overall. Um, these offenses, to me, even though if you were to just look at these first two games, you'd be like, wow, these offenses are cruising, right? I think to some degree, with the pitchers on the mound and the offenses that we have, I think they come back down to earth today. So my number one lean here is actually going to be taking a peek at the under. I wish we were getting this around eight and a half, um, obviously, but this has also moved to seven on plenty of books. So if we could still snag a second, seven and a half, it may be a final play here. If I had to pick a money line play, maybe I'd lean Cincinnati just for the value. I think these two teams are fairly even, evenly matched and in a similar situation today. So plus 105 for a coin flip type of a game in my mind, you have a little bit of an, not an edge, but some value there, right? Because I think this should be a pick em. And if we could get a plus 105 odds, meaning what the books think is less than a pick um, but better payout, that might be where we go. A uh, player prop that I like in this spot as well is going to be Jake Fraley, over 0.5 bases. Uh, he's gotten a hit in 
uh, in six straight games here. He has eight hits throughout that, or eight bases, excuse me, throughout that stretch. Um, and I like his spot today. He's going to get a lot of fastballs from Ben Brown. And this is a guy that his Woba jumps to 450 against fastballs. His K rate drops in half. It's at 10.5. So he's going to get a bunch of fastballs. Um, and I think this could be a good spot for him. Also, Ben Brown loves to throw fastballs up in the, the zone. That's where Fraley likes to hit him as well. So I think this could be a good spot for him um, overall. And again, you're getting decent odds there. Uh, some juice, but minus 146 on Caesars, but it's minus 160 on DraftKings right now. So I do think there's a little bit of value in that spot. All right, uh, San Francisco, I chuckle and I say the San Francisco taking on the Yankees, Blake Snell on the mound. And if you guys flash back to uh, Blake Snell's last start, um, I liked him, right? I thought, okay, you know what? This is going to be his spot. He's going to bounce back. Uh, they end up winning the game, but he absolutely stunk. Um, had a decent amount of strikeouts, but just still has not found his groove, which is unfortunate. And I don't think he finds his groove today against the Yankees. You know what I mean? Now they don't hit lefties as well as they do righties, but this is still such a good lineup. Uh, so I'll lean towards the Yankees. I think because Snell has the name, you're getting the Yankees at minus 140, which may make its way into being a final play just because you're pretty much getting that offense at those odds. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, Yankees on the money line here in terms of the total, it's sitting at eight right now. Um, I don't want to say that, you know, the giants are going to score a bunch of runs here. I think the Yankees could put up, you know, four to five. So if this is anywhere near like a, I guess a five to three game or even a five to four game, like I don't think it gets out of hand. So I'm going to lean slightly towards the under, but I'd much rather pull trigger on the Yankees money line and not worry about how many runs are being scored. All right, Seattle taking on the Angels. It's kind of funny. When I saw this line last night and then this morning, I could have told you it was Luis Castillo versus Griffin Canning. You know what I mean? Because of those odds. Seattle has minus 205 favorites here. That's not something that's going to get it done for me, but they've beat uh, the Angels in four straight and in eight of their last 10 here. Um, and they've beat them 5-4 and then 9 nothing in game number two. So this is obviously a spot where I think Seattle has not necessarily the better offense. I don't want to hype up this Angels offense, but it's probably better than um, Seattle's, at least from a power perspective. But you have Luis Castillo, you have the better bullpen, um, and a bad pitcher on the other side. So I guess I guess Seattle makes sense, but not at that price for me. I'll lean that way, but... And that's only because I can't get to the Angels side, right? Like, I, I don't think that there's value in the Angels even at, uh, you know, plus 170. So I'll lean Seattle. In terms of the total, it's super low. I think that this one could go over. Like, if Seattle's that big of favorites... This could easily be like a, what, 5-3 game, right? Or a 5-2 game or a 4-3 game and push. Like, this should. I don't see how Seattle goes in as this big of favorites and the books don't expect them to score four-plus runs. Like, you can't be that big of a favorite and win 3 nothing or 3-1 in the books, uh, the books' minds, right, when they're setting that line. So give me the over in this spot as well. Even though I don't think, you know, the Angels are going to get to Castillo all that much, I do still think that this could be an over spot. All right, Dodgers bounce back from a 4-1 loss to a 4-1 win last night. They're now minus nearly 300, so very similar to how we talked about, what was it, the um, the Brewers and the Braves earlier. This is a spot in which, obviously, I could see the, the favorites winning this game. It's hard for me to make an argument to get to the Chicago side of things, even with all of, uh, you know, those, those, uh, those odds behind them. You have Austin Gomber on the mound, who I will give credit. Last few starts, he's looked pretty damn good, but he hasn't faced a, a beast like this L.A. offense, right? So... Uh, I think this is going to be a spot in which I probably just fade the game, but give me the Dodgers, parlay throw, and I don't like any massive. I know we get those comments like, why for these heavy favorites, like, don't you ever like to pull the trigger on the other side? We've done that before, but I don't do that just to do that, right? I don't like any of the ultimate dogs today, to say, to, to put it like that. Um, in terms of the total, give me the over here. I think that this is probably a game in which Gavin Stone allows a couple, and I, again, I think the Dodgers do get to Gomber, even though he's been pitching uh, fairly well. All right, Phillies taking on St. Louis. Now, the Phillies have, have looked good in this series so far. 4-2, four, 6-1. Four, uh, the thing is, you know, you'd think, okay, well, Phillies against Lance Lynn, they should be able to bat really well, right? They should, but Tywon Walker's on the mound for the Phillies, so all of a sudden you're looking at a game and it's like, ooh, this could be a tough one, and the total speaks for itself, right? It's up at 9. I do like a lot of runs in this game. I'm going to lean towards the over. Maybe potential first 5 um, over, and then I guess I just have to trust the Phillies' bats here over the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals have been hot as hell. Last 30 days, they're top 5 in pretty much everything other than strikeouts, but these Philly bats, uh, you know, have had to hit their stride a couple months ago, and they really have kept going, um, and so far in this series, we've seen it so I'll lean Phillies on the money line as well but it's probably a first five play both these bullpens anything can kind of happen 
And you know that we love our Phillies first five. So I'll lean over, um, but maybe a first five over as well as first five Phillies money line. I think I like targeting the pitchers here. As bad as Walker's been, I think the Phillies should be able to get to uh, Lance Lynn as well uh, overall. But I believe he had, in fact, let me see if I can find that quickly. I almost remember he had a really good... Yeah, last time he played them, he did have a really good start. Shot Five shutout innings, uh, only one hit. So there's that. Maybe that kind of, you know, goes against what I'm saying, but I still trust these bats. That was back in April. Philly's bats weren't fully heated up at that point. But, uh, guys, it's going to wrap it up for today's show. As always, keep an eye on the pinned comment. All of my final plays will be there. If you do want to ride with me, if you do want to fade me, pretty cool shirt, huh? Um, but, yeah, I'll be adding plays, and not everything we talk about makes its way into actually being bet in the video. So just keep an eye out there. If you haven't liked the video yet, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Appreciate the hell out of you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.